Hello and welcome to another Digital Photo Mentor Photoshop tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at layer masking, what that is, what it means, and what you can do with it. I'm going to open a couple of images in Photoshop and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back in Photoshop and I've got two very different images opened and I'm going to use them to demonstrate how to use something called layer masking. In a couple of previous tutorials I've gone through uh, use layer masking and I've got some questions on exactly what it is and how it works. So this one is going to be fairly simple in terms of helping you understand the concept of masking. So I've got two images open. The first one is this one here. It's a beach sunset. And then the second one is uh, an old Chevy car that I took in Las Vegas. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to combine the two. And there's several different ways you can do that. Um, I've just got them both open in separate windows here. I'm going to select the move tool, which is V on your keyboard, like Victor um, or Chevrolet. And I'm going to shift and hold my shift key down while I drag this picture on top of the other one. Okay, so you see what happened is it's now two layers, one on top of the other. So then I'm going to go ahead and go back and just close the other one so we don't have too many things open. Okay, so simplify my workspace here. All right, so the next thing, um, the easiest way for me to explain layer masking is that imagine you had each of these photos mounted to a board which was opaque. Okay, um, a piece of paper is a poor example because if you hold it up to the light, you can usually see through it. So in this example of the sunset, this is the bottom layer. Imagine it's mounted on a board. You cannot see through it. Okay, so when I put that on the table, you see this picture. Now imagine I took the second image, mounted it to a board, and put it on top of this one. This is what's going to happen. You're not going to see the bottom one anymore, right? Okay, that is exactly how it works with layers. When you put one layer on top of the other, um, except when you change things like blend modes and stuff, so with normal modes on everything, this layer completely hides the one below. Right? In a previous tutorial, I went through the various different layer blend modes and how those work and the layers play together. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link to it below the video as well. So you can go and see how to use blend modes if you want to try them. Those are up here on the layers panel, right? Up on the top corner here, right? So it says normal. You can try the different blend modes, right? So we're not going to get into that because I've covered that in the previous tutorial. So what I want to do is show you something called masking. And there's a couple of different ways to add a mask. So just like in Halloween, when you put a mask on, you can't see your face, right? You can't see the person's face behind it. Same kind of idea when you put a mask on your image. When you have a certain kind of mask, it hides what's behind it. When you have a different color mask, it reveals, just like the eye holes we would in a Halloween mask. Okay, so imagine, if you will, we cut a hole in the board that this picture is mounted on. You would then see the picture below it, just like in a mask. So you can add a mask a couple of different ways. You can go up to your layers menu at the top and choose layer mask. And you'll notice that there's two choices, reveal all or hide all. So if you choose reveal all, it's going to give you a white mask. Let's do that, which means that it reveals everything on this layer. Okay, so nothing really changed. Okay, I'm just gonna command or control Z or Z, depending if you're Canadian or American, to undo that. Let's choose the other option, which is to hide all. So it's actually going to give me a black mask and it's going to hide this layer. Okay, so see what happened is now we can see all of the bottom layer. But if you look at the panel, the layer panel here, you can see that the car is still there. It's just hidden by this black mask. Okay, so a short little... Um, Thing to remember and it's commonly used is black conceals and white reveals okay a lot of photoshop gurus will use that little phrase i will say it again black conceals white reveals <laughs> think about it for a second okay so the black mask is completely concealing the layer of the carb that is that is attached to okay i'm going to undo that as well 
Now the other way that you can add a layer mask is this little icon down the bottom of your layers panel. Your layers panel is your friend because it's got all the things on it you need. Okay, if you hover over it right there, it says add layer mask. Okay, if you just click it, you will get the white mask like we did the first time around. Okay. I'm just going to close my characters panel here. I'm not doing any text. Okay, so the first time we're going to click it and get a white mask. Same thing. Okay, if however you want to hide it, okay, if you click Alt or Option and the same little button, you will get a black mask. Okay, so like everything in Photoshop, there are two different ways usually to do everything. Um, so you can pick which one you prefer, neither is right or wrong, keyboard, um, shortcuts, or clicking on the mouse, totally up to you. Okay? I like the little keys and the icons down here. So I'm actually going to use a white mask so that the car still remains showing to demonstrate how this works. So what happens is when it adds a mask, okay, you only are going to be altering the mask using black or white. So like I mentioned, black conceals, white reveals. So you want to make sure that you're applying only those colors to the mask. So we're actually going to be painting on the mask. So the first thing you're going to do is choose your brush tool. So you can click on it over here on the panel. There's my brush tool, there it is. Or you can just click B for brush, convenient. Second thing you want to do is make sure that you're using the default colors, which are black and white. So you want to make sure that you have only black and white selected in your color panel. So to do that, click X, which sets them to default. And if they're the wrong way around, just click X and it switches black and white. That will become uh, necessary in a minute as we go through. Okay, so for right now, you want black on top because we currently have a white layer mask and we're gonna be painting on it with black. So I'm gonna click X to get my black. I'm going to get my picture back in the middle here. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a brush that's really large so you can see what's happening. And I'm going to use one with a hard edge. Okay, so the hard, hard edge or the hardness of your brush, and I got this little dialog box to show up by just right clicking. Okay, so right click while the tool is active. Okay, hardness is how much feathering there is. 100% um, hardness means that it's going to be in a solid line, which means you're going to see a a definite difference between the painted area and the unpainted area. Okay, so we want that just so that it's obvious in this case. When you go down to zero, and we'll get to that in a minute, it's more feathered and more gradual. It fades in. Okay, so let's go with 100. And we're also going to make our opacity 100 in this case as well. Okay, and there's actually a keyboard shortcut for that. Um, while you have the brush tool activated, your number keys will change the opacity. So if you just click three, it will change it to 30. Let's see that again close up. If you click six, it will change it to 60, 80, for, and so on. Okay, so I want to paint 100% in this case so that you can see it, what's happening. Okay, so we're going to make sure we have black on our palette. Yes, we do, and it's on top. And we have a brush that has 100% hardness and 100% opacity. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm just using the square bracket keys left and right to size the brush. So when I click here, what's going to happen is it's going to basically cut a hole in the mask, just like the eye holes in the Halloween mask, and it's going to show the layer below. Okay, so here we go. All right, look at that. Okay, so now you can see that the sunset picture, which is below, is showing through, and it's fairly, it's fairly obvious. Okay, so I mentioned some of the options in terms of changing how you brush things in. The first one is the brush hardness. Okay, so right click, change that to 50%. Let's do a test. And let's just do another one right side by side here. Okay, so look at the difference between the two. So it still has the center area at 100%, but it gradually fades out to the other image. So there's more of a buffer zone. Okay, and obviously the more you, oops, the more you change your hardness to a lower number, the softer edge brush it's going to be, the more fade there is. So now there's almost almost nothing at 100% in the middle. It's fading so much, okay? But what you can do is when you paint with that, it makes a very soft edge, okay? So it fades from one image to the other. The other thing you can do is change the opacity of your brush that I was playing with earlier. So let's just change that to 50%. Let's go back up here with our hardness. 
and change our brush opacity. So I'm just hitting five and click again. Okay, so now you can see that it's semi-transparent. Okay, so if I paint a stripe across here, you can start to see the image below, but it's also showing the car as well. So it's sort of merging the two together. It's semi-transparent, so you can still see a bit of the car, but it's not fully gone yet. If you keep painting over it, okay, it eventually will completely disappear. It's just like layering paint. If you're painting on a wall or if you um, do art painting, the more paint you layer on, eventually it becomes opaque. Right? and you don't see what's underneath anymore. Same principle here. If you work with a Wacom tablet um, and a stylus like this, like I do sometimes, the flow, which is the pen pressure, can be controlled by the stylus. So actually the harder you press, the more of the flow you will get. So if you press lightly, you get a light flow and a little bit of paint applying. So just the same as if you were applying a paintbrush. Okay, so it's very, very similar to painting. All right, so couple things I want to tell you about this layer masking. Now that we've made a complete mess, if we want to get rid of this now, okay, we can actually do that a couple of different ways. We can right click on the mask itself, okay, and something very important that I also want to mention is when you're painting, you want to make sure that you're painting on the mask, not on the layer. Okay, so notice these little white brackets that are around the mask. That means that is the part that's activated. If I click over here, that means the image is activated, and if I paint there, you're actually just going to get a splotch of color on your image. So if I paint now, I just get a black swatch. Okay, very different. Okay, let's go back to the image and the mask. Okay, very different than painting with black. So make sure that when you're painting, you are on the mask. Okay, so to get rid of it, if you've made a complete mess, you can right-click it and just say delete it. Okay, which you then have to start all over again. You can disable it, which just temporarily hides it. Okay? There's actually a shortcut for that too, and that is shift, click on it, and it goes away. Okay? All these keyboard shortcuts. But if you want to, let's say you made a, uh, only a tiny mistake and you want a part back, like let's say we really don't like this part here, the first one I did, because it's got too hard of an edge on the circle. So then what you want to do is you want to switch your colors. So click that X on your keyboard, switch the colors around. Now you're actually going to be painting with white, so you're going to start painting the mask back in. Okay, so if we paint over this area, gradually it's going to disappear. And if we keep going, all of this mask will disappear. Okay? We could, of course we could paint, oops, go away. course we could paint at 100% and that would give us much quicker and a larger brush okay so if we want to completely get rid of it it is gone okay but our mask is still there we've just painted it back in so this is what's called non-destructive editing uh, you'll hear me mention that a lot it means that no pixels are destroyed so notice that even though the car wasn't showing anymore it's not gone all right if I go back here and I make another 100% and I decide that's not what I like, just go back to white and paint it back out. Okay, so no pixels are gone, no pixels are damaged, it's always all there. That is the power of layers and that is the power of masking right there for you. Okay, so it, it makes it easier to get stuff back when you've made a mistake. Okay, so you don't have to be perfect. So in a nutshell, that is how masking works. It's designed to show one layer through the other. So the next question is, what is the application of this? When can I use this type of thing? Or when, when might you need to use a layer mask? There are several different applications for layer mask, and it's something that most photographers use quite commonly. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be using layer masks on almost everything. So I'm going to actually show you that in a separate video. So uh, if you're just looking to learn the basics, you can stop here. If you want to see me apply these principles of layer masking, I've got three or four examples for you in the next video. So I'll see you over there.